Okay, everybody, so we're on a 2015 Lexus NX200T, and this is the uh, Xtool IP508S, and Xtool sent me this, actually, it's probably been close to a year ago, and I don't use it a whole lot because I've got, you know, nicer scan tools. I've got the Xtool D8BT, which does more than this, but one thing that you need to understand about scan tools of this caliber is this scan tool still does a lot. And we're just gonna do a quick scan and then I'm gonna show you one of the features that this scan tool does that you have to have if you want to be able to work on your own car. So first let's just do an auto scan. And of course you know Lexus is made by Toyota which is why Toyota shows up right there. So we're gonna pick Lexus. This is a North American model. It does not have radar crews. And of course it you know shows the, the type of vehicle that it's detected. We're just gonna do an automatic scan. Now this is a four system uh, scan tool. So you just saw how fast that went down and scanned. It scanned the engine, transmission, ABS, and the electronic parking brake as well as the uh, airbag system. And there's no DTCs, but if we wanted to go into one of these, now, if you had codes, you could clear all of them just with the press of a button. Uh, you got DTC report, just like on the nicer scan tool. And uh, of course you can pause it if it, was, if it happened to be going slow. And then you uh, got a report right there. Now, if you want to go into one, we'll just hit diagnose. We've got live data, so that's what we're going to go into. You've got read trouble code and clear trouble codes. So if it did have codes into that particular module, you could clear them. But I want to show you the live data and the uh, graphing uh, ability of this scan tool. So let's just, uh, you know, of course, here's all your live data. This is your data pitch. You've got 294 data pits. So what you need to understand about the scan tools, it's not just an OBD2 reader where it's showing you just the uh, the EPA regulated OBD2 data PIDs. This actually has manufacturer specific data PID uh, capability, which is how you get to the 294 different data PIDs right here. So let's uh, well, let's find something here. There's high pressure fuel sensor. So we'll take a look at that. It's showing about 2,900 right now. But we're going to hit the graph. I want to show you how nice this graphing works. Let me go ahead and start the vehicle up. Look how nice and responsive the uh, graphing is on, on this. Of course, you can uh, pause it. You can hit custom. You can uh, arrange your X, Y uh, axis, uh, your scales on it uh, through these buttons right here. But let's get over to the, uh, this is what I want to show. And yes, we do want to get out of that. We're going to uh, back all the way out. And we're going to go over here to this special function button. I'm going to have to kill the car so that you can hear what the scan tool is capable of doing. So this has got an electronic parking brake so this button right here hopefully you can see that yeah this button right here is the electronic parking brake for this vehicle and if you want to put rear brake pads on this vehicle whenever they finally wear out you have to have a scan tool that's capable of releasing not really releasing but retracting the uh, caliper the stepper motors and the caliper so that you can pull the uh, pads off, the old pads, put new pads on it, put the caliper back on the 
rotor or on the mounting bracket, you know, and then re uh, re-engage the stepper motors so that your electronic parking brake is set right. So, and of course, this does what you see here. That's it's got what they call nine special functions. Of course, TPMS reset, battery management system. So, if your car has battery management and you just replace the battery, you've got to reset that. Throttle body uh, relearn, DPF. So, if you have a diesel truck and you've got to do a DPF reset, you can. ABS bleeding. You break into the into the uh, brake system and you need to do a full brake bleed you have to be able to actuate the uh, the valves and the motor of the ABS system to be able to do a thorough brake bleed and get all the air out gotta have a scan tool to do it steering angle sensor oil reset that's nothing more than the uh, light on your cluster and most cars are set up to where they can actually do that themselves some cars it's kind of a pain so if you have a scan tool it makes it real easy uh, then of course you got your electronic parking brake which is what we're getting ready to get into and then if you've got a diesel and you had to replace an injector on it you've got where you can code the jet injector so that it'll run right but what I want to show is the uh, parking brake because a lot of people might wonder yeah the the buttons there to be able to do an electronic parking brake retract but does it actually work so that's what we're going to find out so we're going to hit North American again. We'll do auto detect, so it'll auto detect the uh, car. Uh, does not have radar cruise. It auto detected the car. Actuation test. And you've got three functions here. Uh, you can see right here release control of parking brake, park brake release, and then park brake lock. So what we want to do is we want to we want to release the the parking brake. Uh, to where we can put pads on it. But what you've got to be able to do to put pads on is you've got to completely retract them to their full retraction so that you can put pads on the uh, car. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and hit release control of parking brake. And I'm going to put the camera out the door because I want you to be able to, to hear the stepper motors actually doing their thing. So I'm going to hit on. So they are fully retracted at this point to where you can go ahead and put uh, pads on and uh, easily be able to put the caliper back down around the rotor. And then whenever you're ready, I always hit off right there, but it doesn't really seem to do much. So you probably don't really need to. But right now what you got to do is you've got to... Uh, put the parking brake back into its normal state. So we're going to hit parking brake uh, lock. We're going to go on. And I don't know if you heard whenever it actually retracted all the way to where it sandwiched the caliper you could hear the you know the force you know the as it was sandwiching the caliper so right now the the parking brake is locked in fact you can see that the parking brake light is on you've got a light on the instrument cluster that says uh, park so now what we're going to do is go back and then we're just going to release and let me show you what the release does I'm going to hit on So all that did is that just moved the uh, pads away from the caliper enough to where it can free spin. That way whenever you set the parking brake, it, it only has to move a minimal amount for it to be engaged against the uh, rotor. Anyway, that was the number one thing I wanted to show that this scanner is capable of doing. You know, you don't have to have a very expensive scan tool anymore to be able to perform these 
types of functions that just your regular do-it-yourselfer may need to do on, on, on his car or truck. You know, this is common stuff that without a scan tool, you know, you, you can't do it. So you've got to have a scan tool to be able to, like I said, put brakes on your car, coat an injector. If you're, you know, if you, if you uh, replace your own injector, what's the point in being able to replace it if you can't coat it and make it, uh, you know, configure it right to where it's going to, uh, you know, run properly. Uh, anyway, we're done. Like I say, the, the X-Tool sent me this about a year ago. I did a review on it, and I thought, you know what, let me let, let me just see if it will actually do an electronic parking brake uh, actuation on a Lexus. So, you know, that, that's uh, I thought I'd do a video. Anyway, you guys take care.